On the news, President Tinobo suspends Beta Edu direct EFCC chair to conduct probe. Supreme Court dismisses PDP's appeal opposed Governor Alia's election. And BBC investigation reveals late TB Joshua raped and tortured members. Hello and welcome to TV360 Nigeria. I'm Tamlore Akinkwolie. It's a pleasure to have you join us. We begin the news with President Bola Tinobo's suspension of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Better Edo, from office with immediate effect of an alleged 585 million naira scandal in the ministry. Special advisor on media and publicity to the President, Ajari Ngulali, in a statement on Monday said it is in line with the President's avowed commitment to uphold the higher standards of integrity, transparency and accountability in the management of the Commonwealth of Nigerians. Our correspondent Shidi Igwe has more details. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation is under scrutiny from immediate past minister Tadi Afaru, who is facing interrogations by the Economic and Financial Crime Commission EFCC for alleged corrupt practice during her time in office to the Chief Executive Office and National Coordinator of the National Social Investment Program Agency, Halima Shehu, who was suspended some days ago over the movement of money believed to be around 44 billion into private accounts. Now, Halima, who coordinates the Social Investment Program of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, is alleged to have colluded with the Director of Finance to move money in tranches to personal accounts in four days. While that was ongoing, the media was awash with documents alleging that the present minister, Beta Edu, is also complicit in the misappropriation of funds meant for intervention programs in the ministry. The uproar ensued when a letter purportedly signed by Minister Edu surfaced, instructing the Accountant General of the Federation to transfer a sum of 585 million naira to the account of one Onielu Bridget as grant for vulnerable groups in four states. Now, Edu, the youngest minister in President Sinubu's cabinet, has denied the allegations, saying it is a plan to tarnish her image. In spite of her defense, it appears the presidency is taking on of it, as the president has told her to proceed on a suspension with immediate effect, while the EFCC chairman has been directed to conduct a thorough investigation into all aspects of financial transactions involving the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, as well as other agencies under the ministry. Chidi Igwe, TV3 CC News, Lagos. In Lagos State, the state governor Babajide Sonwolu has upped on his administration's commitment to enforcing laws and regulations. Speaking at the state and all tents given Elder the Tafawa Balewa Squad on Sunday, the governor admonished the people to respect the law because they have been crafted to safeguard lives and properties. The governor also promised to complete all the ongoing projects in the state before he completes his tenure. It has to be enforceable laws. In everywhere in the world, law and order is one thing that we cannot compromise. And that's why it's an opportunity again for us to mention that all the applicable laws that we have in Lagos, that the Lagos State House of Assembly, working with the judiciary, has given us powers to implement. We have to implement them. We have to live in an orderly society. We have to live in a society that understands and appreciates the rule of law and ensure that your right stops where another person's right begins. And that we need to, to continue to co-locate and understand and appreciate that we are all co sojourners in the conversation of Lagos and ensure that everything that has to do with our laws in Lagos will be fully implemented. So I'm enjoying all of you to please obey our laws, pay your taxes regularly, now joining me to discuss further on the suspension of the Minister of the Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Peter Edu, I am now being joined by Anwar Rafsan Jani, the Executive Director of Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Centre. Thank you for joining me, Rafsan Jani. Now you condemned the suspension of Ali Masheu, calling it excessive. What is your thought on the suspension of the Minister, Peter Edu? I think it is important to put the record forward 
uh, what we said is that uh, one public official who have been appointed and confirmed by the Senate, when they are going to be removed, there should be due process. Uh, and the basis in which you can only sack somebody is on the basis of first uh, incapacitation, established fraud or corruption, uh, death. Uh, if somebody die, you know, the person will no longer be there or voluntary um, resignation. So what we are saying is that um, if there's uh, any uh, sack that will happen, it should be, you know, in accordance with our law. I was just setting our um, legal framework on how you can, you know, uh, relieve or sack public official, not on the basis of personal quarrel between um, one official or the other. So that was the basis in which we made that call that due process should be followed, you know, in removing somebody, not on the basis of personal quarrel with between the two persons. Um, now, with regard to the suspension by the uh, minister uh, of humanitarian affairs, this is a clerical call. This is a popular call made by the Nigerian people uh, over the you know a revelation of you know fraudulent activities in that ministry by some people. We also believe that more hands, more people were involved or are involved in this fraud, and therefore we call on government to actually extend this you know investigation to other public officials who may have been involved in this uh perpetuation of um fraud so we are not you know um you know uh you know we are not calling for anybody to be spared in fact everyone should be investigated who has hand in this matter this is the only way to ensure that uh in future such kind of um instances is not a call. So if Alima, uh, if um, uh, Sadia, if uh, Beta are involved in any fraudulent thing after investigation, they should not be spared, they should not be covered up, they should be made to face the law of the land. All right, so um, the president has suspended two appointees now, and we all know that this is in line in his effort to fight corruption. What do you have to say about this as in line with his promise to fight corruption? The president did not tell you that he has promised to fight corruption. What has happened in this case is that there's an overwhelming popular demand that justice must be done because we see clear diversion of public taxpayers' money into a uh, private pocket. So even though the president did not make those claims, but we applaud him, we, you know, uh, we commend him for taking that steps uh, to ensure that there's a level of sanity you know, in the public service. So let the president, you know, allow the, the EFCC and ICPC to do their work. No cover of, no political cover for anybody who had breached the law. If we do that, then it means that uh, there will be huge lesson for other public officials if the president will not cover, will not interfere in the investigation and subsequent penalty that will be made to the people there. So we commend the president for hearing or for taking uh, public concern, you know, into this matter that led to the suspension of the persons involved. This allegation in various ministries, how can we further prevent corruption rather than trying to cure it? This is the new uh, direction that EFCC and ICPC are actually doing. They are trying to see how they can even prevent the corruption from happening. Uh, so that we do not need to waste public taxpayers' money and time and resources and even risk the personnel. If we can prevent and block the leakages, that will be better than allowing the corruption to happen. And then you now start, you know, struggling on how to deal with the people who have perpetrated corruption in the, in the various ministries and for startup. And let me say that this incident does not did not happen today. It has been happening, and we've been calling on the government to block leakages to ensure that public officials do not turn public uh, resources into personal resources. We've been talking about this. Unfortunately, uh, not much attention has been given. And that is why we are commending President Tinubu please for listening to the Nigerian people on this matter. Because in the past, this has have been, have been happening. Sadia, you know, uh, the former minister, has been invited by the National Assembly uh, several times over the same, you know, or similar allegation of uh, you know, either diversion or misappropriation, alleged misappropriation or diversion of public taxpayers' money. But President Bahari never took any action, never 
do anything to prevent it, you know, from further happening. So for Tinibu to listen to the Nigerian people, we must definitely commend him and hope that he will do more and allow due process to happen. Because once he did not interfere and did not use political interference in this matter, I think the rest of the public official will be scared to do things because there will not be cover up from and the president. And Warraf Sanjani, the Executive Director of Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center. Thank you for speaking with us. Moving on, in a shocking revelation, the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, has uncovered evidence of widespread abuse and tortures allegedly committed by the late Sibi Joshua, founder of one of the world's largest Christian evangelical churches, the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Former members, including five British citizens, have come forward with allegations spanning almost two decades of atrocities committed in the church, such as rape, forced abortion, physical violence, and fake miracle illness. Our correspondent, Sidney Okafo, has more details. Two years after his demise, one of the world's kept secrets appears to be in the open as the man who was known for performing controversial miracles is now in the news again. Aside his death, the last time he made this kind of headline was when his church building collapsed killing over 150 people, but the like a cat with nine lives, he escaped the long arm of the law. But this time, the BBC investigation conducted with international media platform Open Democracy includes accounts from more than 25 former disciples from various countries, detailing instances of abuse and torture within the church. The victims, some whom were in their teens when they joined, liking their experience to being in a cut. One British woman identified as Ray spent 12 years as a Ray, disciple in Joshua's Ray. compound where she alleges sexual assault, solitary confinement and attempted suicide due to the severity of the abuse. Multiple victims including Jessica Kamun from Namibia reported instances of rape by TB Joshua leading to false abortion. The Synagogue Church of All Nations which is currently led by TB Joshua's widow Evelyn did not respond to the specification allegation. Despite several attempts by the former church insider to raise the alarm, they claim to have been effectively silenced, with some facing physical attacks and threats. Televangelist Temitokpe Balogun Joshua, also known as TB Joshua, was reported to have passed away in his sleep in 2021. He had made massive following as the pastor of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, located in Igbe Ikotun, a suburb in Lagos. The BBC investigation calls for a thorough inquiry into the church's operation during TB Joshua's tenure, urging accountability for the alleged abuses. Sydney Okafo, TV360, Lagos. To political matters, the Supreme Court has dismissed an appeal challenging the election of Governor Ayasint Alia in Benue State. The appeals court affirmed the victory of the priest and politician following the withdrawal of the appeal by Titus Uba of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Uba, who contested under the PDP, a challenged Governor Alia's victory in the March 18th governorship election, which had been earlier affirmed by the Election Petition Tribunal and the Court of Appeal in Abuja. The Court of Appeal has cited a lack of jurisdiction to hear the petition dominate a pre-election matter. Uh, we're quite excited. It's 100% uh, justice delivered. And the victory is for all the good people of Benue State. Uh, God leads and God is again demonstrates every day, you know, that uh, justice is justice. I'm quite pleased that uh, it's come to this point. Um, it's going to ginger us some more to do the great things for the state. I mean, actually, it's quite a high time for everyone to come on board with us, you know, for the progress, for the development of Benue State. So it is a great win for all the great people of the state. We're very excited about the day. I am appreciative of the work done by the justices that sat on the case. This is a long battle that took us to 13 cases at the pre-election matter on this same point. They lost down to court of appeal up to Supreme Court and re, uh, uh, re instigated the case during, I mean, in the election petition. And today, the Supreme Court have just shown, shown to the world that justice is consistent. Justice is for all. 
that the case, I mean, the court is consistent in doing justice to the society and they are not in, interested in the politics around it. So I am very, very elated that it ends this way. And I'm not sure it's expected because I've read the case. There's no merit in the case. We're taking a short break now. When we return, we'll bring you the story of the Super Eagles' recent 2 0 loss to Guinea in their AFCON 2024 warm up match. Stay with us for the full story after this break. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And hey, wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome back. Let's now revisit our headlines with a quick recap of our top stories. President Bola Tinobu has suspended the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, from office with immediate effect over an alleged 585 million naira scandal in the ministry. Special advisor on media and publicity to the President, Adjurian Gulali, in a statement on Monday said it is in line with the President's avowed commitment to uphold the highest standard of integrity, transparency, and accountability in the management of the Commonwealth of Nigerians. We also told you that the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, has uncovered evidence of widespread abuse and torture allegedly committed by the late T.B. Joshua, founder of one of the world's largest Christian evangelical churches, the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Former members, including five British citizens, have come forward with allegations spanning over almost two decades of atrocities committed in the church, such as rape, forced abortion, physical violence, and fake miracle illness. Now, in case you missed any of our news bulletin or for more updates, you can catch us on Limus World TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria. Or download our mobile app on Google Play Store or our app gallery and Apple Store. On Facebook, we are TV360 Online. Now let's dive into the latest in the world of business. Okwaya Miwosheni has the update. Okwaya, over to you. Thank you, Tammy Lori. Hello and welcome to Business News. In the world of business, the United Nations UN has raised concerns about Nigeria's economic outlook for 2024, citing the nation's increasing debt, rising inflation rate, and their potential impact on citizens' welfare. According to the World Economic Situation and Prospect Report for 2024, Nigeria's inflation rate is at 28.2%, 
percent, and its debt profile surged from 49.85 trillion naira in the first quarter to about 87.38 trillion in the second quarter of 2023, signifying a 75.35 percent increase. Despite projecting an increase in Nigeria's growth rate from 2.9 percent in 2023 to 3.1 percent in 2024, the UN report highlighted the risks associated with the country's economic conditions. The report acknowledged that policy reforms in the hydrocarbon sector contributed to a moderate improvement in growth prospect. However, it cautioned that escalating public debt, persistent inflation, a, rise, a rising cost of living, and a weak business environment pose downward risk to Nigeria's growth. We'll go on a short break and be back with Stock Market Report. It's the first week day of trading and bagging activities continued on the Nigerian exchange market NGX in a northward movement, pushing the benchmark performance indicator above 80% mark. And the market's capitalization stood at 43.96 trillion naira as the market went up with 0.83%. Now, in the aggregate, 123 listed NGX participated in trading, ending on a positive note with 54 gainers against 18 losers. Now, Julius Beggars Nigeria led the gainers with a 10% share price appreciation closing at 46 naira 75 kobo followed closely by Kotix plc which closed at suit naira 75 kobo now at the end of the first week day of trading on the nigerian stock exchange ngx a total of 1 million 190 million volumes of shares were exchanged on 16,081 deals corresponding to a market value of over 15 billion were traded so for our select global stock the, the reverse was the case as there was no trading activity for japan's nikkei why wall street future just fell the eight as it was flat as global shares remained red on Monday and investors wary of central bank narratives based for US inflation data and a corporate reporting season where robust results are needed to justify high valuation, leaving our select global stock, the UK FTSE and the US Dow Jones in a bearish trade at 0.055% and 0.23%. And that's it on business and stock market report. Back to you, Tamilore, for the rest of the news. Thank you, Okoyemi. Now on the global scene, former President Donald Trump has announced his intention to attend an appeals court hearing in Washington DC on Tuesday regarding the scope of his presidential immunity. In a post on his truth social platform, Trump asserted his entitlement to immunity during his tenure as President of the United States and Commander-in-Chief. Prosecutors have accused Trump of attempting to obstruct the Congress and defraud the U.S. government in connection with effort to overturn President Joe Biden's 2020 election victory. Trump is appealing a decision by U.S. District Judge who rejected his claim of immunity on December the 1st, leading to the current appeal to the U.S. Court of Appeal for the District of Columbia Circuit. The former president contends that former presidents cannot face criminal charges for actions taken in their official capacities. And up next is Entertainment Report on News Now. In 2023, Grammy-winning hit maker Bonaboy released the seventh album, I Told Them, which had the hit single City Boy that enjoyed international commercial success. The global superstar has added another UK certification to his collection, with his hit single City Boy receiving a BPI silver certification after surpassing over 200,000 units in sales. With City Boy earning a BPI silver certification, it has to Bonaboy's collection of BPI certifications that includes platinum plaques for Last Last and Gay, gold plaques for on the low and for my hand fit Ed Sheeran and silver plaques for real life fit Stormzy, Anybody and Bono. The singer will also be competing to take home the Maiden Award for the Best African Song Performance at the 2024 Grammy Awards scheduled for February 5th. 
Nigerian American actress Ayo Debiri has won her first Golden Globe Award for her role in the It's Drama de Debier. The 81st Golden Globe Awards were held on Sunday night in Beverly Hills, California, USA. She took home the trophy for Best Actress in a TV Series, Musical or Comedy for Portrayal of Sydney in Debier. She saw competition from Selena Gomez, Rachel Brosnan, Natasha Leon, Quinta Bruson, and Elle Fanning to clinch the award. A Debiri's journey in entertainment began in high school while taking part in open mic challenges. And that's it on the entertainment segment of News Now. Okoyemi Uwashini, TV360 News, Lagos. And finally, in sports, in a pre-Afcon friendly match played in Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates, the Super Eagles faced a setback losing 2-0 to Guinea. The defeat has sparked concerns about Nigeria's preparedness for the upcoming championship set to kick off this week. Ago Kamara scored for Guinea in the 14th minute, putting the Super Eagles on the back foot. Despite a, tries, despite a chance to equalize with a penalty kick, Simon Moses couldn't capitalize as a shot was saved by the Guinean goalkeeper. In the 64th minute, Fasenet Conte extended Guinness' lead, intensifying the challenges for the three-time African champions as they go up for the African Cup of Nations. And still in sport, the German defender nicknamed the Kersier because of his sublime talent was regarded as one of the greatest footballers of all time. He was also famed for carving out his own role as a sweeper, now often known as Libro, sitting slightly behind the team's defensive line and sweeping up any man or ball that broke through. Across a nearly two decade long career, much of us much of it spent at Boyhood Club Bayern Munich, he won an array of honors, including a World Cup with then West Germany in 1974. He's one of the three men, along with Brazil Mario Zagallo, who passed away this month, and France had their best chance to have won the World Cup as a player and as a manager. And that's a wrap on our news bulletin. Thank you for watching. See you next time.